Welcome back. To chapter. Well, we did chapter 7 and 8 yesterday. So we're on chapter 9 and 10. So we'll be reading chapters 9 and 10. So let's, let's get this running. Let's get this running. Now, if I pause it, that either means I gotta eat. My family walked in here and they don't like being on camera because my mom does. But yeah. Chapter 9. How long is this to begin with? Okay. Chapter 9. Just about everything that happened to me that summer happened because of Windexy. For instance, without him, I would never have met Gloria Dump. He was the one who introduced us. What happened was this. I was riding my bike home from Gertrude's Pets, and when Dixie was running along beside me. We went past Dunlop and Stevie, Stevie Berry's house, Dewberry's house. And when Dunlop, Dunlap and Stevie saw me, they got on their bikes and started following me. They wouldn't ride. They wouldn't ride with me. They just rode behind me and whispered things that I couldn't hear. Neither of them had any hair on his head because their mama shaved their heads every week during the summer because one of the, because of because of the one time Dunlop got fleas in his hair from the, their cat Sandy San, San, Sadie Sadie Sadie. And now they look like two identical bald headed babies. Even though they weren't twins, Dunlop was ten years old like me and Stevie was nine and tall for his age. I could I can I can hear you, I hollered back at them. I could hear what you're saying, but I couldn't. When Dixie started to race away ahead of me. You better watch out, Dun Dunlap hollered. That dog is headed right for the witch's house. When Dixie I called but when Dixie I called but he kept on going faster and hopped a gate and went into the most overgrown jungle of the yard that I have ever seen. You better go get your dog out of there, Dunlop said. The witch will eat your do will eat that dog, Stevie said. Shut up, I told them. I got off my bike and went up to the gate and hollered, Win Dixie, you better come out of there. But he didn't. She probably ate him. Is probably eating him right now, Stevie said. Him and Dunlap were standing behind me. She eats dogs all the t all the time. Get lost, you bald-headed babies! I said. Hey, said Dunlap. That's a that ain't a very nice way for Peter's daughter to talk. He and Stevie backed up a little. I stood there and thought for a minute. I finally decided that I was more afraid of losing Mendixie than I was having to deal with an eating a dog eating witch. So I went through the gate and into the yard. That witch is going to eat the dog for dinner and you for dessert, Stevie said. Well tell the preacher what well tell the preacher preacher what happened to you, Dunlop sh shouted after me. But then I was deep in the jungle. There was every kind of thing growing. Everywhere there were flowers and vegetables and trees and vines. When Dixie, I said, he he he, I heard, he he he, I heard, this dog sure likes to eat. I went around, a, a really big tree, all covered in mo moss, and there was when Dixie, he was eating something right out of the witch's hand. She looked up at me, this dog sure likes peanut butter, she said, you can always trust a dog that likes peanut butter. She was old with wrinkly brown skin, she had on a big floppy hat with flowers all over it, and she... And she didn't have any teeth, but she didn't look like a witch. She looked nice. And when Dixie liked her, I could tell. I'm sorry he got in your garden, I said. You ain't go you ain't got to be sorry. She said, I enjoy a little company. My name is Opal, I told her. My name is Gloria Dump, she said. Ain't that a terrible last name? Dump. My last name is Baloney. Baloney? Baloney? Something like that. I said, sometimes the kids at school... At school back home, and Wetley called me lunch me. Ha ha! Glory Dumps laughed. What about this dog? What do you call him? When Dixie, I said. When Dixie thumped his tongue on the ground, he tried smelling, but it was hard with his mouth all full of peanut butter. 
Why is this getting hot? The freak. When Dixie Gloria Dump said, When Dixie Gloria Dump said, You mean like the grocery store? Yes, ma'am, I said. Woo! She said, That takes a strange that takes the strange name prize, don't it? Yes, ma'am, I said. I was just fixing to make myself a peanut butter sandwich, she said. You want one too? Alright, I said, yes, please. Go on. Go on and sit down, she said, pointing at a lawn chair with the back all busted out of it. But sit down careful. I sat down careful and Gloria Dot made me a peanut butter sandwich on white bread. Then she made one for herself and put her false teeth in it to eat it. When she was done, she said to me, You know my eyes ain't too good at all. I can't see nothing but general sheeps of things, so I got to rely on my heart. Why don't you go on and tell me everything about yourself so I could see you at my heart? And because when Dixie was looking up at her like she was the best thing he had ever seen, and because the peanut butter sandwich had been so good, and because I had been waiting for a long time to tell some, tell some person everything about me, I did. You know, I feel like this thing is hot because of the god dang freaking cord. And it's always like making weird noises. Scaring the shit out of me. Sorry, the mini curse. Hurry on. Chapter 10. I told Gloria Dump everything I told her how me and the preacher had just removed to know just moved to Naomi and had and how I had to leave all my friends behind. I told her about my mom and leaving and I listed out the ten things I knew about her and I explained that her and here in Naomi I missed my mom more than any more than I ever had in Watley. I told her about the preacher being like a turtle hiding all the time inside a shell. I told her about finding Win Dixie in the produce department and how because of him I became friends with Miss Franny Block, and he got a working for a man named Otis at Katrude's Pets, and he got invited to Sweetie Pie's Thomas birthday party. I even told Gloria Dump how Dunlop and Stevie Dewberry called her a witch, but I told her that they were they, they were stupid, mean, bald-headed boys, and I didn't believe them, not for long anyhow. And the whole time I was talking, Gloria Dump was listening. She was nodding her head and smelling and frowning and saying, Hmm, and is that right? I could feel her listening with all her heart and it felt good. You know what she said? When I was all done, what? When I was all done, what? Could be that you got more of your mama in you and that, and then you than just red hair and freckles and running fast. Really? I said, like what? Wait, did we read this? Like maybe you got her green thumb. The two of us could plant something and see how it grows. Test your thumb out. Okay, I said. When Gloria Dump picked for me to grow was a tree. Or she said it was a tree to me. It looked more like a plant. She had me dug up a hole for it and put it in the ground and passed the dirt around it tight. Like it was a baby. And then I, and then I was tucking it into bed. What kind of tree is this? I asked Gloria Dump. It is a wait and see tree, she said. What's that mean? It means you go to wait for it to grow up bef before you know what it is. Can I come back and see you tomorrow? See it tomorrow? I asked, child. She said, as long as this is my garden, you're welcome in it. But that tree ain't going to go to. That tree ain't going to have changed much by tomorrow. But I want to see you too, I said. Hum, said Gloria Dump. I ain't going nowhere. I, I'll be right here. I woke Bun Dixie up. Then he had peanut butter in his whiskers and kept yawning and stretching. He licked, he licked Gloria Dumb's hand before we left, and I thanked her. That night, when the preacher was tucking me into bed, I told him how I got a job at Groot's Pet and Groot's Pets, and I told him all about making friends with Miss Franny Block and getting invited to Sweetie Pie's party, and I told him about meeting Gloria Dump. When Dixie laid on the floor waiting for the preacher to leave so he could hop up on the bed like he was like he always did. When I was done talking, the preacher kissed me goodnight and then he leaned over and gave Win Dixie a kiss too right on the top of his head. You go ahead and get up on there now, 
he said to Windexie. Windexie looked up at the preacher. He didn't smell at him, but he opened his teeth wide like he was laughing like the preacher had just told him the funniest joke in the world, and that is what amazed me the most. The preacher laughed back. Windexie hopped up on the bed, and the preacher got him and turned out the light. I leaned over and kissed Windexie too, right on the nose, but he didn't notice. He was already asleep and snoring. That is it for chapters 9 and 10. We read chapters 7 and 8. So we read chapters today, 9 and 10. So. <sighs> now it's shout out times for my other YouTube channels. It's time I'm going to give out a shout out to my, from my, uh, Top Lazy YouTube channel. Uh, now. I know I swore on here, and you don't know how book videos are swearing, but you do have books that have swear words in them. So I'm sorry for swearing. I have that habit sometimes. So I have a new album coming. I told you guys about this. It's called I'm Done, Coming Soon. Not dumb, done, like the song that I made. And I've been wanting to make a song by that for a long time, so please thank me for it. Okay, so... Let's give a shout out to someone who commented on my videos. The video is going to go to YTP official music video because it's really good. And shout out goes to NFN Josh. He commented on the post of my Nick Avocado YTP music video called YTP official music video because it's really good. Uh, so this is a Nick Avocado uh, YTP video. So if you would like to go over there, thumb up the video, comment, and I might just as well give you a shout out on the next video on that YouTube channel. So either way, you win and lose. So yeah, peace out, guys. No, no mercy.